So I screwed up. I blindly followed best practices for pipelines and security, etc. And guess what? I can never actually merge a change into the main branch and deploy the code, the infrastructure as code. So what I want to do today is walk you through why first, and then let's go through the pipeline YAML after I fix it and uh, show you how you can theoretically make a change or hopefully in practice, no longer theoretically. Also, if I sound congested, it is because I am. Uh, I've had a cold since uh, New Year's Eve and it's not going away, so I might as well just record anyhow. Still congested, uh, did not plan to re-record part of this, uh, but it makes most sense. So the repository that I'm looking at is this demo repository, which basically bootstraps a bunch of um, Azure resources as well as identities and Azure DevOps resources to demonstrate how to do end-to-end -end governance, uh, basically close as many security gaps as possible. Uh, when I originally created it, I used the uh, version one of the Azure AD provider, and you'll see here as well, oh, the newest version is like two, which means there's a breaking change. Um, and so, I knew this for a long time, just didn't have a chance to fix it. Um, if you were running the old code uh, for that sort of like intermittent period, it would say warning, attribute is deprecated. And for the most part, it would still continue working. Um, at some point, I did find the time to go look at it. And the fix is actually quite simple. Uh, basically, before I was generating random passwords to use for the service principle, now Azure does that for you. So I can remove that code and actually just hook into the password that Azure Active Directory created for me, which I then put in my secret store uh, key vault to use. I actually never use the password directly, right? I'm just taking it, put it somewhere safe, and the rest of the code always just grabs it from uh, key vault. Yeah, so this is the change that I'm talking about uh, that I'm trying to get into uh, production. Okay, so let's look at uh, why this was an issue. Um, you'll see that it was merged, right? But if you go look further, you'll see that the um, pull requests build actually failed. And the pull requests are configured such that you're not allowed to merge them if they fail. So that's this one here. Um, and it's going to say there's drift because I deleted those passwords, right? And I'm also changing what's happening uh, for Azure AD. I'm going to use their passwords. Um, and so why did it suddenly go green? And it really, I added a commit on top, but basically it went green because I did the Terraform plan and apply locally. Um, because I didn't want to fix the permissions problem. Okay, so that one I just kind of bypassed. Um, this one is also uh, not passing the build, which is why I can't merge it, and I haven't bypassed it yet. But I can use it to show you um, why I locked myself up following best practices. So what is this change? Um, there's a best practice in Terraform that I hadn't done, which is basically you don't want to have accounts or credentials that are orphans, so you should assign an owner. Um, so I do that. If you scroll down, uh, I did it two commits, and you'll see this red one is actually, it failed. If we go, let me open that in a new window. Um, okay, I have to sign in, la 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 la. Um, now I can open it in Azure Pipelines. Um, to just read the message. It's not shown here, is it? No. Um, so yeah, let me just go look at that. And you'll see that Terraform detect configuration drift. And before it's masked out, but I'm guessing it's nobody or something. And now I'm going to add an owner to this uh, application, which is the uh, security principle under the hood. Um, and so the pipeline is designed such that if there are changes, I want to be aware of them and they will fail. So let's go back. I'm just going to pick this tab. Um, if we come here into Azure Pipelines, uh, I'm going to guess it's a stage. I haven't looked at this in so long. Pull request. Um, yeah, so it checks the exit code. And if there's drift, it's going to basically fail it. Now, you know, if you configure the repository such that builds have to pass, basically you're shooting yourself in the foot. It will never actually um, be green if you actually want to make changes to your infrastructure. Um, there are upsides and downsides to that, right? So, you know, to, to review again, infrastructure as code, 
you can use it actually to do configuration management. So I've already deployed my infrastructure and I want to change it. The goal is actually to change it, right? If I'm actually deploying new code, maybe if I'm doing a scheduled run, then I want to be aware of something changed because it happened outside of my like sort of Git workflow um, here. But in this case, I purposely actually want to change something and I can't. Um, and so I didn't have time. And so I just did it locally, right? And because my Terraform state is stored externally in a um, file uh, in object storage, um, then like, okay, it's now uh, the same state. So all good, your pull request is green and now you can actually make a push. So how I would normally bypass this problem is um, I would actually just uh, say, uh, this does not apply to admins because I work in God mode. It's pretty much just me. And this goes into a um, non-Microsoft tenant Azure subscription. But as you can see here, I have no admin access. Um, and that's because Microsoft um, uses for its orgs uh, just-in-time access system. So I have to go make myself an admin and emails go out and says, oh, Julie is making herself an admin. So be right back. Okay, back. So I made myself an admin. You'll see there's a Microsoft logo on that uh, self-service portal. And now I have this settings button. So that means I'm an admin. And let me just check if I can actually um, bypass those rules. So this is the main branch. If I click on edit, it requires checks. Um, and it does not include administrators. So before I haven't refreshed this, it said I couldn't merge this. Let me just refresh it. And now I can merge it even though it's red, right? So I know it'll change those owners. Now, in the first example at the beginning of this video, I did the change locally. So the remote Terraform state file, like now they were in sync, like one-on-one -on -one with the CI build. So now if I click merge pull request and it's like red, all these errors, it didn't pass, um, my build agent will make these changes. And here comes the next handcuffing part. Let me click it first. Uh, yeah, I am an admin. I wonder if non-Microsoft repos have all that red stuff in there. Um, so now it's merged. It's going to kick off a build. Um, you won't necessarily see it in the pull request. In fact, I don't think you do at all. Um, now that I've done a push onto main, it's not running. There's no build running. Oh, that's another issue. <laughs> if I come here, let's just go to the pipeline and see what's happening. I think it did. Oh no, it did trigger. I just, I'm not seeing it on GitHub. Um, so let's see what happens here. Uh, just click on it, wait to run. And yes, you'll see that it actually needs um, access to a resource before it can continue. Um, now I'll explain another time why I don't like this. Um, so this actually doesn't have anything, um, real credentials. I just don't want, at least not via me, that people see what the Microsoft tenant ID is, what my subscription ID is. Um, even though if you really looked hard, you could find it. Um, so I have to authorize that resource. I'm guessing it's a resource I didn't configure yet. Um, I added it relatively recently for this project. Um, but it is a pattern that I normally kind of use. So... Uh, let's see if this takes too long. I'm going to cut this part of the video. All this Microsoft stuff is in here. Um, okay. Now maybe for the tear part, Terraform part, let me make this a little bit bigger so people can kind of see. That part is done. The CI part, which really is just checking the code. Um, what's more interesting is actually this part where it'll actually look at my infrastructure. What are the changes that are going to be there? It's still doing prep. Um, okay, now it's downloading all these credentials from Key Vault um, because I actually don't store the credentials to Azure in Azure DevOps. Um, the only thing I store in Azure DevOps is um, read-only credentials to access those key vaults to get actual read, uh, sorry, the right credentials to do some stuff. And so now you'll see the Terraform plan um, and it should say, we're going to make all these changes. 
Um, but this is not the pull request um, pipeline, which will stop after plan, right? You'll see here, there's an upcoming apply step as well. So let's watch this screen through and you see it said, oh, we have changes. And now it's gonna do a Terraform apply auto uh, approve. That's really funny that Terraform, like what got started out. Um, so let's see, it's acquiring the state lock, right? So that you prevent multiple people from changing the infrastructure at the same time. Um, because the state file for Terraform is like the source of truth of what configuration um, should be or is expected rather. So yeah, it worked, Terraform applied. Um, so let's see, blah, blah, blah. Let's go to apply. Um, and it'll say, okay, these are the things it did. So it um, added five, changed five and five destroyed, but they're all related to Azure Active Directory. Again, what I wanted to do was um, uh, add the owners per Terraform best practices. So yeah, some stuff changed in here. I'll review more in detail later. Um, huh, the word dev is getting like escaped. <laughs> I must have used it for testing, I don't know. Can't you tell I'm congested and just really tired, but I want to get a video out because it's been like six months. So I wanted to talk about as well how I screwed myself over. Um, basically, you'll see this screenshot. Um, I think it's from about 10 days ago. And I kept getting all these emails. Oh, look, she elevated herself to admin and then it was revoked because I closed a window. And then I kept saying, oh, I need an approval to do this, to use this. And part of it is like, okay, if you're super paranoid, you can attach, uh, let me go back to Chrome. There we go. Nope, that's a screenshot. Uh, here we go. So if I come in here, um, I'm in the project, so I should be able to click just this. And if I go into my service connections, you'll see that again, I only have those read only access to the key vault. And what I can do is approval and check. And this is what I had before approval. Like I had to explicitly go in the UI and just click something. And part of it was like, okay, this is open source. People can make pull requests and I'm trying all these things in code to kind of like, um, you know, add some level of protection that something isn't automatically gonna go through. And one of the things I did was actually this approvals and guess what, it was really annoying. It costs so much time. And if I go back to that screenshot, oh, not this one, where's the other one? I guess I closed it. I don't know, it was like half an hour or an hour. And because this isn't my full-time job, it's just half an hour or an hour is a lot. Um, when I have like, you know, customer calls and I need a context switch as well, which is why I just said at some point, screw it. And I just actually took all of that away. Um, and as you can tell, sometimes I now also just make myself an admin and get stuff done. And there's still this one kind of like pull request, like open and hanging, um, on the wall because it's really old and it's all the change from the dev environment, the production environment. And at this point I'm just like, Ugh, I don't care. I have other things to do. Uh, I'll deal with it a little bit later. Um, I added two environments to basically test infrastructure as code changes, but I don't have time to deal with it. For the point of this video, I basically wanted to share with you how I screwed myself over, right? I blindly followed all these like best practices, how you can put in all these safeguards for security. And at the same time, completely forgetting actually like, you know, two uh, really important um, context rules or facts uh, for this particular use case. A, it's not going in my Microsoft tenant. It's going into my Visual Studio Enterprise subscription and it does nothing really. Um, it bootstraps a demo, but there isn't anything actually even running in there. It's like, woohoo, there's a storage account um, and a key vault and everything's set as private. So nothing happens. Why do I care? Why am I so paranoid? Um, the other thing too, is that it's just me, you know, it's like just me operating in God mode. And if that's the case, then I, why am I putting all these hurdles in front of me? Right. There's still other pieces of configuration of who can actually access this repository. And so, yes, a lot of Microsoft people can, you know, do stuff, um, in here if I give them access to it. Right. Um, in terms of right access, of course, anybody can fork it and things like that. But still it's like, I should just trust myself. Why am I, um, you know, there's this great tweet about forcing your family through airport security every day. Um, and that came into mind after a discussion with a colleague. And I was like, yeah, why am I doing that? That's really dumb. 
I'm doing exactly the same thing that I actually sometimes I'm super snarky about other people for like blindly following best practices without actually thinking about what you're doing without understanding, not just like the consequences, but also like under what circumstances should you make a decision? And so this was all dumb. <laughs> so now I'm going to just undo a lot of the security. It'll work well enough. Um, other colleagues will be using this for demos, which is also why I wanted to make it relatively simple. Um, stop overfilling my email box and the risk of something happening. It's small. It's in a subscription with nothing in it. So all good. Uh, I'm going to wrap this one up. It's going to be a bit like uh, raw, not enough editing, but I want to get this out there. And actually going forward, the videos might be a little bit more like this, not just because my congestion is from allergies, but also because yeah, I can't fit everything in time-wise. So, all right. Uh, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Uh, subscribe if you think this is interesting. It's like real life examples and stuff. Um, sometimes I'll do just kind of like how-to videos as well. Um, but yeah, more should be coming out a bit more raw than what I did last year, but more will be coming out. All right. See you in the next one.